All right, lesson six, using tree diagrams to represent a sample space and to calculate probabilities. So suppose a girl attends a preschool where the students are stuttering, studying primary colors. To help teach calendar skills, the teacher has each student maintain a calendar in his or her cubby. For each of the four days that the students are covering primary colors in class, students get to place a colored dot on their calendar blue, yellow, or red. When the four days of the school week have passed, Monday through Thursday, what might the young girl's calendar look like? One outcome could be four blue dots if the student chose blue each day, but consider that the first day Monday could be blue, and the next day Tuesday could be yellow, and Wednesday could be blue, and Thursday could be red. Or maybe Monday and Tuesday could be yellow, Wednesday could be blue, and Thursday could be red. Or maybe Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday could be blue, and Thursday could be red, and so on and so forth. Well, as hard, as, as hard to follow as this seems now, we have only mentioned three of the 81 possible outcomes in terms of the four days of colors. Listing the other 78 outcomes would take several pages. So rather than listing outcomes in a manner described above, particularly when the situation has multiple stages, such as multiple days in the case above, we often use a tree diagram to display all possible outcomes visually. Additionally, when the outcomes of each stage are the result of a chance experiment, tree diagrams are helpful for computing probabilities. So let's take a look at example one. Imagine that a family decides to play a game each night. They all agree to use a tetrahedral die, an example of four-sided pyramidal, pyramidal die where each of the four possible outcomes is equally likely. And here's a picture of one below. If they do that each night to randomly determine if they will play a board game, which will be denoted as B, or a card game, which will be denoted as C. The tree diagram mapping the possible overall outcomes over the two consecutive nights will be developed. So to make a tree diagram first, present all possibilities for the first stage. In this case, the first stage is Monday. Well, again, you can either be play a board game or a card game. Then from each branch of the first stage, we're going to attach all possibilities for the second stage, which would be on Tuesday. Well, on Tuesday, the possibilities are again to play a board game or a card game, or again to play a board game or a card game. So now we attach the possibilities. If we played a board game on Monday, we could play a board game on Tuesday, which would mean we'd play board games for both nights. We could play a board game Monday, but then choose to play a card game on Tuesday, which means our outcome is going to be board game, card game. If we ended up choosing to play a card game on Monday, we could possibly choose to play a board game on Tuesday, Therefore, it would be card game, board game. And last but not least, if we played a card game on Monday, we could also possibly choose to play a card game on Tuesday, and so we would have card game, card game. So note that if the situation had more than two stages, this process would be repeated until all the stages have been represented. We would just keep moving on to the right and put the, whatever the outcomes are for each of the previous outcomes and then connect them. So for part A, if BB represents two straight nights of board games, what does CB represent? Well, CB would represent a card game on the first night and a board game on the second night. For part B, list the outcomes where exactly one board game is played over the two days. How many outcomes were there? Well, we could have done board game, card game, or card game, board game. So that means there's two outcomes. All right, let's take a look at example two. In the example above, each night's outcome is a result of a chance experiment rolling the tetrahedral die. Thus, there is a probability associated with each night's outcome. By multiplying the possibilities or probabilities of the outcomes from each stage, we can obtain the probability for each branch of the tree. In this case, we can figure out the probability of each of the four outcomes, BB, BC, 
CB, and CC. For this family, a card game will be played if the, if the die lands on the value of 1, and a board game will be played if the die lands showing a value of 2, 3, or 4. This makes the probability of a board game B on given night 0.75 hundredths or 75 percent because it's three out of the four possibilities. So if we attach the probabilities, board games are going to be 75 hundredths of the time, then we would write that underneath each part. So 75 hundredths, 75 hundredths, that means the card game would have 25 hundredths because it's one out of four times. So if we do that, now we multiply the probabilities together. So 75 hundredths times 75 hundredths is 5,625 ten thousandths, and 75 hundredths times 25 hundredths is 1,875 ten thousandths. So the probabilities for two of the four outcomes are shown. Go ahead and use this method to compute the probabilities for the two remaining outcomes. You should have had CB is 25 hundredths times 75 hundredths is 1,875 ten thousandths. And card game ver times card game is 625 ten thousandths. So for part B, what is the probability that there will be exactly one night of board games over the two nights? Well, the two outcomes which contain exactly one night of board games are BC and CB. The probability of exactly one night of board games would be the sum of the probabilities of these two outcomes, since the outcomes are disjoint, meaning two events cannot happen at the same time. So that means the 0.1875 plus the 0.1875 is 0.375, or 375 thousandths. All right, so let's take the exercises. Two friends meet at a grocery store and remark that a neighboring family just welcomed their second child. It turns out that both children in this family are girls, and they are not twins. One of the friends is curious about what are the chances of having two girls in a family the first two births. Suppose that for each birth, the probability of a boy birth is 50%, and the probability of a girl birth is also 50%, which would make sense. Well, for number one, draw a tree diagram demonstrating the four possible, possible birth outcomes for the family with two children. Remember, they have no twins. Use the symbols B for the outcome of boy and G for the outcome of girl. Consider the first birth to be the first stage. Refer to example one if you need help getting started. For part two, write the probabilities of each stage's outcome to the tree diagram you developed above and determine the probabilities for each of the four possible birth outcomes for a family with two children and again no twins. So to set this up you should have the first child. Well the first child could have been a boy or a girl. And because it is 50 percent chance we put five tenths under the B and five tenths under the G. For the second child you also have a 50-50 chance of having a boy or girl. And the same thing could happen if you had a girl the first time, you have a 50-50 chance of getting a boy or a girl. So what is the outcome? Well again, having a boy and then a boy would be 50 times 50 or 25 hundredths, which is 25 percent. Having a boy then a girl would be the same thing. Having a girl then a boy would be the same probability. And having a girl then a girl would be the same probability. So in this case, since the probability of a boy is five tenths and the probability of a girl is five tenths, each of the four outcomes will have a twenty-five hundredths percent or 25 hundredths probability of occurring because 5 tenths five times 5 tenths is 25 hundredths. So for part three, what is the probability of a fam family having two girls in this situation? 
is that greater than or less than the probability of having exactly one girl and two births? Well, the probability of a family having two girls is 25 hundredths or 25 percent. This is less than the probability of having exactly one girl and two births, which is 5 tenths, the sum of the probability of BG and GB. Because again, 25 hundredths plus 25 hundredths is five 50 hundredths or 5 tenths, or 50%. All right, so can you think of any situations where the first stage of a tree diagram might have two possibilities, but the second stage might have more than two possibilities attached to each first stage branch. Go ahead and think about that, and we'll cover that in our following lessons. See you in class.